today we are learning when it comes to endangered animals, they're in danger of becoming extinct. Oh no! What can scientists do? What can they do to help these poor endangered animals, okay? First, let's start with your homework. Let's see why you, which endangered animals you guys picked and why you thought it's important. Okay, so I got homework submissions from a lot of people in class 2E10, but not all of them. I got homework submissions from Simon, Jenny, Bo, Dami, Zoyman, Kaki, Min Huang, and Michael. Okay, we're missing quite a few names there. Tonight, your homework will be adding to this. So if you did not do your homework for today, you will need to do it tonight and add a new piece of information, okay? So let's have Simon go first. Simon, can you go ahead and tell us about your drawing? My, my drawing is about the bees. Bees, my, bees can make, get nectar in front of flower and make, and make other things and make vegetables and food. Without bees, they, they, they will be, then, then the environment will be bad. Like, like they make, they make some, some, some nuts, like for chickens and, and cows, so that they could make milk, milk, cereal, chicken, egg, cheese, cheese, beef, and, and so there's, there's one thing about to kill the and nitrogenous kill bacteria. They, then they then if the bee come in, he removes the bacteria, the the nitrogenous kill the bee and 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 they want the nectar and the nectar bring home the bees will will also be like like the same as the bee and and they and the and the wax will get get free. Yes, very good, Simon. This is excellent. So Simon talks about all of the ways that the bee is so important to the environment. Spreading pollen for flowers to grow, making honey, and how growing trees helps all and flowers help all the other animals like cow and chicken who need those plants to eat and then we need them to eat food. So excellent job, Simon, thinking about all the ways they're important. Okay, let's share another one. Zoyman had a great drawing. Zoyman, could you share with us? I draw me and my brother kill a leopard. Mm -hmm. So can you read the part about why we need to protect them? Right here, we need to protect them because they they will know more leopards. Then we will kill more more like lions and tigers. Mm -hmm. and, when more, and when they will know no animals left, people don't have any food. Yes, very good. All right, Zoyman, excellent. I like your drawing and you wrote a lot of information. Okay, let's see. Min Wang had a good one and Kaki also had, oh, Kaki also had a good one. Kaki drew a really, really nice picture. Kaki, this drawing, very good job, Kaki. She also said that bees are healthy for the environment. She has a really interesting fact right here. Oh, she has two really good things actually about right here. Kaki, could you read this one part for us, please? By keeping, the, by keeping the cycle of life turning, bees boast the color and beauty of our countryside. Some 18% of impermanent white flowers Equal insect pollinate. Very good. So that says 80% of European wildflowers need insect pollination 
by animals like bees in order to survive. If the bees are gone, Europe would lose 80% of their flowers. That's a lot. Very good. Uh, Min Huang had a good one as well, but it's also a bee. And Bo, let's make Bo our last one since he did a different animal and a really nice uh, exp explanation of why they're important. Bo, go ahead and share. Um, people kill elephants to um, the tusk. Mm -hmm. People take skin elephants to make bags and other things. Mm -hmm. um, yes. People take it to the circus. Mm -hmm. People take elephant to the zoo. Mm -hmm. um, to people eat them to carry wood. Very good. And that's a great drawing of an elephant bow. I like the little decoration on its forehead to show maybe it's at the circus or something. Um, could you think of a reason the elephant is important to its environment? Yes, I don't know. That's okay. I can give you maybe one or two ways. I think maybe elephants are important to the savanna because when they die, they provide a lot of food for carnivores and decomposers. And also, elephants have long, long, long trunks that help it eat plants at the top of the trees. This can actually help keep the trees healthy by letting new branches grow in their place. Okay, Donnie also had a really great picture, so I wanted to show it quickly, but we don't have time to talk about it, but great job, Donnie, and he had some really interesting facts about bees and how important they are to us. Okay. Let's begin today's lesson. We have a lot to get through, so everyone be ready to answer a lot of questions. Okay, first of all, can someone read the definition for a scientist? We should know this one. Cherry, go ahead. Who studies one of the sciences? Very good, sciences. An expert who studies sciences. Could someone read for me, what is a poacher? What is a poacher, Kitty? Someone who catches and kills animals illegally. Good, can you say illegally? Illegally. Very good, Kitty. Illegally means it's against the law. It's not allowed. So if animals are protected by the law, the government says you cannot kill these animals. Poachers still kill them illegally. And last we have sensor. That's a device used to record. Sensors can record where animals are or they can record things like movement in a sea turtle nest. So sensors can sense things like movement, location, heat. Okay, how can scientists help Save the sea turtles. Start thinking about this, and real quick, let's watch this video and get an idea. Here we can see the sea turtle. What's wrong with the sea turtle? What's wrong with the sea turtle, Zoom? It has trash on its body and it can go anywhere. Very good, it has trash on its body. Can anyone tell what kind of trash that is? What is that from? Min Huang. People. People, very good. Very good. How are these people helping the animal? Nuna, how did they help it? What were they doing for him here? And I... Oh, can you help her? Um, all the people um, put the net out of the turtle body. 
Yes, they're cutting the net off of the turtle's body. They're cutting it with scissors. Now what are they doing for the sea turtle? What are they doing for the sea turtle, everybody? Um, Kitty, what are they doing? What's the sea turtle doing now? Uh, they put the sea turtle back to the sea. Excellent job. So who can tell me what did they do for the sea turtle? It started like this, now it's like this. What did they do for the sea turtle? Kaki? They helped the sea turtle to go back their habitat. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Without them, the sea turtle would have died. The sea turtle would not have survived. Excellent answer, Kaki. So, Sasa is a marine animal rescue in Vietnam. They're located here in Vietnam near Da Nang. What do you guys think scientists do for the sea turtles? Sami? Help the sea turtle for it do not uh, be extinct. Exactly, they help the sea turtles. Simon said the same thing on chat. Okay, let's go on to the next part. That was really good, guys. Here we have some more about what scientists can do to protect eggs from poachers. So who can read about this problem for me? Who can read about the poacher problem? Min An, can you read about the poacher problem? Right here. Min Huang, could you please read this for me? What can science do to protect nests from poach? Good, that word is poachers. Poachers. Very good, thank you Min Huang. And can someone read the text box for me? How about Kaki? The poacher problem. There, there's a problem. I cannot see all the words. Really? Um, yeah. Is something covering it? Uh, the next sentence I cannot see. And, um, I just, I just see a, uh, and people called poachers come to the beach and steal the eggs before they hatch. Poachers sell the eggs and restaurants. One egg can be worth 300,000. Very good, okay. Well, you were able to read most of it, thankfully. So the poachers come to the beach and steal the eggs illegally. They sell the eggs to restaurants where people eat them. One turtle egg, because they're so rare and illegal, is worth $300. $300 is about 6.9 million VND. 6,900,000 VND for one turtle egg at a restaurant. So what can scientists do to prevent that, to stop that? Here's what Simon and Jenny wanted to talk about. Jenny, could you read this for me? Has come up with a new way to watch the poacher. Mm -hmm. She invented a fake sea turtle egg called the Invirus Egg. Sure. Very good. Thank you so much. So here, a scientist has come up with a new way to catch poachers. She invented a fake sea turtle egg called the investigator. Investigator. So um, who did the reading? Who can explain to me what is in the, how the fake egg works? Is there something inside it? First, I'm gonna make you guys big so I can see all of you. Can you raise your hand if you did the reading? You didn't have to, but it makes it fun to talk about. Nancy did it, Kaki did it, Simon did it, Jenny, Jenny did. Anyone else do the reading? All right. 
Not too bad, guys. Um, who can, ex there we go. So who would like to explain how this works? Um, Nancy, you said you read it. Could you explain how this works, Nancy? A fake egg looks so, so much like a, a real egg. The, the poacher takes the fake egg with him and thinks it is still an egg, a normal egg. And then, you know, the egg is cut in the poacher's hands and then it, and then uh, it the works and then it goes beep 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 like that. When when the scientists find out that the, the poacher has taken the eggs, they they uh, rush for the, the the space to go and then they they go there and then take back the eggs to the ocean. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nancy. That's a great description of how they find the eggs. So what is it that they track? What do they put in the fake egg so they can figure out where it is? Michael? A GPS tracker. Excellent job, a GPS tracker. Great work. So here we can see it has a secret. Inside it is a GPS tracker. The GPS tracker sends a signal to the scientist's computer and tells them where the egg is. And just like Nancy and Simon both said, the police can go there, return the eggs to the sea, and arrest the poacher for breaking the law. Great work, guys. I'm very proud of you guys for your reading. Okay, another option is to put up a fence. How might this help? How might putting up a fence help? Hi, Zoyman. How does it help? Well, we put up the fence. If we put up the fence, the poachers will know where the turtle egg is. All right, that's a great point. Zoyman says if we put up the fence, it's easier for poachers to find them. So there has to be a good reason. What, what reason, what good reason is there for putting up the fence? What good reason is there? Uh, Simon? They put the fence up so, so that they, so that people could know that they, there's, that is the spot where turtles lay eggs. If there's, if they do not have a sign there, the people would put over there and, the, and they could lay on the turtles egg area. Exactly, right? So even if it makes it easier for the poachers to find, it also stops people from stepping on them or laying on them at the beach. Could someone read this passage for me? Nuna, could you read this? Yes, right now people call park rangers when they are see a turtle nest. Park rangers put off fences. The fences help the keep the eggs safe, but sometimes beaches are closed for many weeks. Good, so sometimes they close the beaches for a long time to keep people away from the sea turtle eggs. Here's light pollution. So sea turtles know, baby sea turtles know where the ocean is because they follow the moonlight on it. If there is a lot of light pollution, a lot of light from the houses, then they can't find the ocean. They get confused. Is home the ocean or do they go to the houses? So during sea turtle baby hatching season, everyone has to keep their lights off at night. It's the law. If you leave your lights on, that's illegal because then the baby sea turtles get lost. They need to be able to find the moonlight to the ocean. We don't want them going up to our house. How about this one, turtle exclusion device? Ideas about what this is? This is a hard one. If someone knows this one, I'll be very impressed. What's happening in the picture? What observation can you make? 
All right, I see a couple people wanting to make an observation. Um, Zoyman, can you make an observation about the picture? The turtle is caught in the net. Yes, the turtle's caught in the net. Then what happens? Michael, go ahead, Michael. But there is a, but there will be a kind of net or a place that turtles cannot go through and it goes under the shape thing and it will open a trap door mm -hmm. and, and free the turtle. Excellent, so that's pretty close, Michael. Good work, uh, Zoyman and Michael. So there's a grate right here that the fish and the shrimp can pass through when fishermen are fishing, but the holes are too small for the turtles. So the turtles can't get all the way into the fishing net. And there's a little escape door that the turtles can swim out of. This way, we don't accidentally catch, turtle, catch the turtles and hurt them. So this turtle exclusion device helps fishermen not catch turtles. I'm free! <laughs> Yay, good. Okay. Satellite tracking. What do you see on the back of this sea turtle? What do you see on his back, Kitty? The pictures show that the, the turtle are, are stuck, are endangered. Not quite what I'm looking for. Could someone read this bottom part about satellite tracking, Jenny? Satellite telemetry. Satellite so tracking. Satellite allow researcher to track sea turtle as them as they swim from from place to place. Very good. That word is allows allows researchers to track them as they swim face to place. This way, we know where they are and we know how to protect them. Which areas of the ocean do we need to protect since now we know where they are? Or which beaches do we need to protect now that we know where they go to lay their eggs? Okay, trash and climate change, I think we all know that one. Keep the beaches nice and clean. This is the same beach before and after everyone worked together to clean it up for the sea turtles. And my favorite, wildlife refuges. A refuge is a place where animals can go when they're sick or hurt to get better or if there's not a lot left and we want to protect them. What are they doing here? What are they doing for these animals? Cherry, what are they doing for the animals? They help the animals. Say it again, Cherry. They see if the animals are most dead or the how are they? They fat or they they big or they small? Mm -hmm. they, uh, what do they eat? Did they eat trash or they eat uh, something else? Yeah, that's exactly it. They'll clean out their stomach if they ate trash. They'll help them if they're wrapped in plastic. Lots of different things. Help us, we are hurt. So let's recap. Scientists help protect the eggs, conserve habitats, stop climate change, satellite tracking, and wildlife refugees for all these different animals. Here we have different bird eggs and reptile eggs. We have the forest habitat. They do satellite tracking for birds. Wildlife refugees they have for elephants, sloths, koala bears, bears, uh, penguins. They have so many different things for all these animals. So all of the things scientists do for sea turtles, they do for a lot of animals. 
protecting their eggs, tracking them, helping them when they're sick or injured, many different things. Let's do this one. What can scientists do to help save this endangered leopard? So we just learned about sea turtles. Nancy. Yeah, I know one thing, that they stop polluting the lakes and rivers that, that the emerald leopard drinks in. Exactly, stop polluting. That's a great one, Nancy. How about Dami? Don't kill them. Yes, good. Don't, Don't kill, kill them. Kaki? They grow more plants so the leopard can have more habitat. Very good, Kaki. That's a great answer. Right? Because we're destroying their habitat by cutting down trees. They should grow more. Okay, so here's a recap of what they do for the sea turtles. Pretty much they do these things for all the animals like we saw on the other slide. Protect eggs, stop climate change, rescue the animals, use satellites. So your homework is to add to your drawing. Research one organization that helps your animal. Write its name and two things it is doing to help. So if you didn't draw last time, draw your animal this time and write why it's important to its environment and what is hurting it. Then add this, one organization that helps your endangered animal, and the two things, two things the scientists are doing to help it. That's all for today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.